think the show is fantastic and you guys both do such great work and I have a lot of questions about it, but I have to do a, a, an individual question for Paul first, if you don't mind, just because I'm a huge fan of aliens and I just need to know um, from, you know, uh, that was early in your career. And I'm just curious if you could share a little bit of what it was like making that film and working with Cameron. You know, you'd never guess that you were a fan of aliens just by your backdrop there. Uh, there's every indication that you live in the real world, but uh, interesting. <laughs> um, um, I have, there is a world, by the way, you know, I say, I, you know, if you know this, the people who really live and breathe aliens, and I did not know, but it was, I was so thrilled to be in it. It's a wonderful, great movie, but there's a subculture of people who have all the things and the props. And, and I met a guy who said, I've seen that movie every Saturday for 34 years. Whoa. And I said, okay, you got to get out of the house. You got to call your parents. You got to do because they're worried about you. Um, you know, my job, it's a rare thing to read a script and you know you can see the movie. And Aliens was so well written. And and Jim Cameron, who had only done, I think, Terminator and, and like one other movie, but he was clearly pretty brilliant. And I read the script and went, oh, this is going to be a huge hit and it's going to be really good. My job is to not muck it up. Just if I can be a little cog in the wheel and not bring the wheel to a grinding halt. And uh, so that's, you know, that was my, that was the standard I was going for. I set the bar low, but it was, it was exciting. And, and as I say, you know, it's going to be good. And it was, I didn't realize how uh, long their, the, its legacy was. I mean, people still really, really, really live that film. I've met a few people who've still lived that film. Uh, and I think if you really want to see it firsthand, go to Comic-Con when that reopens. But one of the things about Aliens is the great writing, which leads me to the Kaminsky method and Chuck Lorre's great writing. Yes. I, I think I think that while all of you guys deliver such great performances, it really is Chuck's dialogue that elevate this to, to another level. Can you both talk about working with him and just the quality of his writing? I mean, I, he knows what he's doing, <laughs> you know, he doesn't need, he doesn't need to say that. Um, and, but, you know, but I think he feels he really stretched himself with the Kaminsky method too, because he's used to working in, you know, multicam comedy format. And this was something different where there were a lot of different things he could play with. Um, he could play with something as simple as the amount of time he had, you know, it didn't have to be 22 and a half minutes or whatever it is now. It could be 30 minutes. It could be 40 minutes if we needed it to be a little longer. Um, and just playing with single camera, uh, no audience. Like this was all stuff that was um, a newer challenge to Chuck, which I think he embraced. And I think he enjoyed um bringing that uh, the drama in too, you know, it, it isn't a joke a minute type of show. I mean, it's hopefully a funny show, but it's um, there's a lot of heart to it. And there's a lot of, um, you know, big serious issues that we tackle on the show. And, and in this case, you know, Chuck had the whole um, pandemic to write. So he, he wrote all six episodes, you know, him alone at his house and, um, and so we went into the season having having all the episodes written and got to just know exactly where the stories and all of our characters were going. So it was. I, it think, was I think what also makes it really work, and, I, and I'm going to guess was a real treat for Chuck, is that he's writing from a very real place. So here's a guy in his upper 60s writing about guys in their upper 60s and beyond. And so. The, the the goal of the show wasn't let's get the most laughs let's let, or let's keep writing a show that will get us nine ten eleven seasons the goal was let's talk about what this is what is it like to be aging what is it like to have perhaps your best years behind you and hopefully some good years ahead of you what is it like to have you know to look at guy friendship you know alan arkin and, and michael douglas relationship that's an odd clumsy world to dig into because guys are not great at being friends. So I think the fact that Chuck Laurie got to write from his heart and, and let a lot of things out and his frustration um, with all of that was probably very cathartic. For him. I have to ask you, Paul, about uh, your judgment on Barry Levinson as an actor, not as a director. He's great. You know, it, it's so funny because you, you, you watch and you go, 
he shouldn't be that good. Uh, but he's been, I mean, he's been on camera a lot. I mean, you know, in Rain Man, he was, he yeah. was a therapist and, and, uh, and <laughs> high anxiety. He was, here's your paper, here's your paper. Um, and that was, uh, that was sort of mind trippy um, for me, just like, you know, Barry, that was my very first job ever. Yep. Dipping my feet in the, in the business was getting cast by Barry and Diner. And then that they end up watching Diner was just such a surreal thing. Um, yeah, it was just, I, I just kept smiling. Like, this has been a long, crazy journey that I'm on a set 40 years later <laughs> with Barry. And, and, and it's about Michael getting a break in a big movie by Barry. Well, I can't even get my head around all the surrealness of this. I gotta stop there. I'm just gonna say thank you both so much and seriously, great work on this season. Uh, it's so good. Good luck with you. Yeah, you. collection there. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Have a good day. <laughs>